My final guest is Rockland County Executive Ed Day. Welcome, Ed. It's good to be here, George. So, Ed, you know, I've known you for very many years. Uh, I consider you a, a close personal friend, and we've, we cut our teeth together in some of the community groups yep. and, and, um, and advocacy, and it's, it's great now to be working as a partner in government with you and your leadership as a county exec, and, and now uh, me here over as supervisor in Clarkstown. Uh, really, a Clarkstown boy made good as, a, <laughs> as, as our county exec. But uh, for the benefit of our viewers, you know, well, first I want to thank you for, for being on our My show. My pleasure. But uh, for the benefit of our viewers and our final show of, of 2016, uh, which will kind of bridge the new year, um, maybe uh, you could tell our viewers a little bit about your background and what, what brought you into government. Oh, sure. Uh, well, first, my background primarily was law enforcement professionally. Uh, I spent, I was a commander in the NYPD, and I actually was a chief of detectives in Baltimore for a bit of time. Uh, private sector experience continued um, mostly in security systems. I was a senior consultant for a security systems firm until uh, my, last, my last day at work was the day before I became county executive in 2014, January. Um, locally, I've been very actively engaged in the school system, a PTA a liaison to Albany, a delegate, um, a, a life award winner, which I'm very proud of, um, active in a number of efforts, uh, efforts in that area, coach for 20 years in the community, um, hundreds of children, uh, baseball, football, basketball, one of you. Yeah. But, uh, and also the community perspective, uh, civic groups. Uh, I was the head of the Little Tornado Association. We knew each other from back mm -hmm. in the day with the housing task force mm -hmm. and um, the comprehensive plan back mm -hmm. in the late 90s. Mm -hmm. um, and that's my involvement there. And um, I'm very proud of it. It's, it's um, it seemed everything brought me into, at some point, getting engaged in government, and I ran for legislature back in 2005. I was elected, um, was able to represent the New City community um, directly that way, and, um, and um, life brought me to where I am now as a county executive of Rockland County. It's, uh, it's an amazing job. Uh, it's very challenging, as most people know we were. We were pretty much in the, in the soup, uh, mm -hmm. close to it. Uh, it's an amazing thing to see the folks who uh, we work with, our partners in government, such as yourself, um, work together to turn this county around. And I'm, I'm very proud of it. It's challenging. I love going to work every day. Mm -hmm. you, before we get into the county stuff, I, I do want to just uh, highlight, uh, you know, you're, you're a proud dad and, and, and grandfather, yeah. and, and um, you're, you have two, two sons, you know, Chris and Michael, right. and, and uh, both have uh, served our country, you know, Maybe you could give a shout out about yeah, your kids I, and, and your grandkids. Yeah, yeah. well, um, you know, it's uh, Christopher uh, served uh, two tours of combat in Iraq and Afghanistan. He was a Army captain, uh, Ranger qualified, um, came back good, thank God. Uh, he is the uh, dad of our grandson, CJ, and our granddaughter, Scarlett. Uh, we have one on the way uh, also, so very proud of that. Uh, Michael, my younger son, um, you know, he kind of surprised us all. He went to Iona, played uh, football there, and suddenly he said he's going to enlist. But he was going for special forces. Um, he earned his green beret. Mm -hmm. uh, two of a hundred make that. Uh, I think he was trying to outdo his brother because mm -hmm. the Rangers are only twenty percent, <laughs> top twenty percent. He had to go for the top two. But uh, Michael has deployed twice already. He was in Afghanistan. He was uh, in um, in uh, Ecuador, uh, in Colombia actually, mm -hmm. uh, looking for, believe it or not, infiltration up from Ecuador mm -hmm. uh, to the United States of uh, Syrian refugees. Mm -hmm. uh, not the good ones either, by the way. Right. So he's doing God's work in, work in that area. He will deploy again. And mm -hmm. uh, he's been in the service about six years. And he's right now, he's a staff sergeant. Well, well, th thank your sons for, um, for their service to our thank country. Thank you very much. And um, you know, we very much appreciate it. You know, uh, you talk about um, uh, some of the accomplishments. And you've had tremendous accomplishments. I mean, not just your you know your your government accomplishments, but really, um, I can I can tell you as somebody that was actively involved watching you you know go through the legislature, there were a lot of forces that were lined against you, and uh, you weren't supposed to win, and you had a smashing success and victory, and it really kind of turned uh, the political establishment uh, on its heels. I was I was happy to kind of follow that two years later here in Clarkstown, but uh, um, when you took office, there there was a tremendous. Um, uh, set of obstacles that you had to overcome. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you could set the stage for our viewers what you were facing. Yeah. How, how close we were to bankruptcy. Well, we were. We were. We knew it was bad. I didn't know it was this bad. Um, we had a hundred and thirty-eight million dollar deficit coming in the door. Um, we had a bunker mentality in county government. Um, people were just looking to protect themselves. We were. Fo we had forty-two thousand dollars in the bank the third week of January. We came that close to default. Uh, our bond rating was one step above junk. Uh, and the, the whole notion of Rockland County was negative. Uh, there's no other way of putting it. Um, we went to work. 
Um, we expected um, immediate accountability from our managers. We did a number of things there, but the long story short is our deficit now, after uh, two years, believe it or not, at the end of 2015, audited, uh, went from 138 million. It is now $16 million. We have 96 million on a payment plan without a predicted double digit tax increase. We worked that within our own operating budget. Um, our uh, county budget is now around the 2008 levels. We've had uh, roughly an, um, a 9% decrease in our budget over the past couple of years. Um, $67 million worth of uh, reductions in cost. Our workforce is 22% lighter than it was when I came into office. Um, and I give our, our workers a tremendous tip of the cap because they're, they're delivering services with less people. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm very, very proud of what they do. Um, our bond rating, uh, we've got four bond upgrades and since I've been in office. We, are, we went from one step above junk to one step below our first A which, mm -hmm. with S&P. Uh, so uh, things are looking good and you know I think the most important thing George is that there's a, a different feel in Rockland County I, you know you, you can do all the numbers you can crunch numbers and make it sound wonderful but people went from being in, 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 in at, at the dearth of where we were back then and they believe again and mm -hmm. I think that really is truly going to bring us out of this the final piece this is going to be continuing on the path we've taken of responsible spending, keeping taxes low. You remember, taxes will go up in county government three years in a row, double digit, 30, 18, 11%. Uh, we've changed the trajectory, mm -hmm. uh, and we're gonna continue to do that. The three proposed budgets I've had, I've, I've put out the, uh, so far since I've become county executive, I've averaged 2% a year. Mm -hmm. So we've changed the culture of where we were, and again, our, our work is, uh, getting the job done. Uh, people see the ca our county roads uh, were a wreck when we first came in. We invested in that, even though we were, you know, didn't mm -hmm. had to pick only a couple of things to invest in. We invested in our roads. We invested in a public safety on our 9-11 system. Those two issues to me were critical mm -hmm. uh, that we get that squared away. And we've been just chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. It's not been easy, uh, but it's been challenging. Right. Right. You know, I am in credit to you and your administration because, again, the, the results are remarkable. And there were some tough decisions that, that, yeah. uh, that you had to make, uh, certainly um, closing, uh, closing the hospital, yes. you know, Summit Park. And um, there was some pain involved with that, but it was an important decision because, you know, government doesn't always do things, uh, you and I know, as, as folks that come from outside of a government perspective, government sometimes is the worst person to be running certain types of uh, operations and certainly uh, in that situation some of the park there were some real financial challenges and issues and no one really wanted to see it happen but it was a difficult right. decision and you weren't afraid to make it it was it was a shame because we were looking to sell the facility we had everything lined up we had a, a buyer who supposedly was very well vetted uh, at the end of the day he didn't have the money he did not have the uh, licensing we've tried very hard to make it happen so instead of, of getting all workers over there uh, and our patients to stay Again, the toughest decision I had to make. But at the end of the day, um, two thirds of those patients stayed in Rockland County. Many of our workers got jobs here locally because with the added ca mm -hmm. caseload in our local facilities, they needed more nurses uh, and more staff. Um, it was not the scenario we wanted, but uh, what that did, that decision did was, um, you know, close a chapter, unfortunately, but allowed us now to deal with that payment of that long-term debt, that, that bond we took out, deficit bond we took out. The losses we were having in the hospital range from 12 to 18 million a year. The, the annual payments in that bond now at 13.5. So we were able to cut our losses. The first year was tough, obviously. We took a, a hit. We still kept taxes low despite that hit. But we were able to basically transfer that money payment over to knocking down our deficit bond, which will be paid off in eight more years. Right. And, and uh, this year's budget, as, as this show airs, the, uh, the budget will have been passed by that point. Uh, and uh, your proposal is for a budget that's under the cap, yep. uh, that uh, is forward-looking, and um, so congratulations right. on that. And it's something we work together on. Yes. Uh, and you know, I'll give you a little credit on this mm -hmm. one because we looked at the, we looked at our order, look at the sewer district, uh, and the fees, and we looked at their um, at the um, contingency fund they had, which is you know, in the view of the controller, way too high. We sat down with the board and the director. Um, we looked at that. So at the end of the day, we ended up in a situation for the county bill. Um, we stayed within the property tax cap, which is 1.17%, about a buck a month extra. Um, but we drove down the sewage fees by 4%. Right. That produced a 0% tax, 
tax increase on your town, county bill for Clarkstown residents, mm -hmm. also Ryan Poe too. Right. And from your perspective, you did even a better job here. Uh, not only did you come in, uh, you know, with a negative increase, but you, your taxpayers obviously are getting the same benefit um, in the reduction of the fees for sewer. Yeah. So, uh, you know, collectively, we work very well together on this, and this mm -hmm. is something people should know, is that when we found this, we reached out to each other, spoke to each other. Mm -hmm. This is an approach we should take, and you being on the sewer district board, obviously, we're intimately involved in this, so uh, you should get some credit for that, too. Uh, and, and I appreciate that, uh, Ed, I really do. I mean, your leadership there, uh, you know, the Rockland County Sewer District uh, had been, um, um, had been really accumulating a tremendous surplus, and by all accounts, it's at least two and a half times what the highest recommended right. number is uh, in, in the estimate of, of most government oversight. And uh, it's a separate governing board, too, right. so we don't, you know, the county, even though it's Rockland County Sewer District, we have no direct control, per se. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something legislature put together, they oversee it. Right. Um, I, my act's a typical ministerial, but mm -hmm. when you bring common sense to the table and right. you make things clear that, no, mm -hmm. this is not the way to go, you can be convincing, and we, I think we did a bit of a double team on that, so yeah. I was very proud of no, that. I, I am, too, because, yeah. uh, with your leadership and, and uh, you know having uh, your finance people speak with me as well offline, yeah. which was helpful, and I was able to advocate as uh, as a member of that board. Now as a supervisor, the supervisor of the town is a member of that board, and uh, that four percent cut is for our Clarkstown residents. So when you couple that with the actual uh, property tax cut that uh, my administration was able to bring, which we just passed, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, Clarkstown residents are getting a one point eight percent reduction. All Clarkstown residents. Right. Uh, residential property tax reduction on the town level and the Clarkson residents are also now getting a four percent reduction in their county sewer tax uh, assessment um, that's a that's a that's a reduction so taxes are not going up for anybody right. in Clarkstown and what I'm even more proud of is the businesses because we were able also to uh, offer a 1.4 percent reduction for a business class which hasn't had a reduction um, in fact when, when Clarkson has been staying under the cap or close to the cap uh, with the differential from the right. homestead to non-homestead with the equalization rate. Uh, it's very complicated formularies that the state puts out. The business class has, has been taking large increases. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So this is the first time, um, this is the first time since 1984 that the residents and the businesses in the town of Clarkston are getting a meaningful tax right. cut. And you helped uh, to really uh, double the, double the, uh, double that cut by the 4% reduction on the sewer tax. Right, so it's important people see that because, you know, everybody's politically focused on the tax bill that goes to the residents, which obviously is a reality to our residents. But what they don't see is when someone turns around, which had become a habit here, obviously, mm -hmm. before you came into office, of piling on the tax increases to the businesses, they're going to pass those costs along. So you're either gonna pay it in your tax bill or pay it when you go shopping right. or, or go bowling. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, something, like, that's where you're gonna pay it. So there's, you know, there's, what we understand here collectively is no, no such thing as a free lunch. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no magic money. Uh, the, it has to be something, the bill has to be paid. It's a matter of how do we go about it. And, you know, here in, in Clarkstown, what I did notice is that there were, there were uh, taxes being kept low, but there was uh, money being taken from, from the contingency, the money that mm -hmm. came in through the um, Solid Waste Authority right. trans from the transfer to the station. Mm -hmm. um, this is true reduction. There's a big difference because people can take solace in knowing that what's being done here now, these are permanent tax cuts. And I would just remind people, when was the last time you heard tax cut? Yeah. It, it's just not yeah. something people, they always scream for it, they look for it, we all pray for it, every one of us who mm -hmm. pays taxes. It's happening, yeah. and I think it's just an amazing thing to celebrate. Well, I appreciate that. You know, uh, we only have a couple of minutes left, but I do want to talk about, you know, one of the hallmarks of my administration has been a hallmark of your administration, and we've been working closely together on really enforcing our, our housing codes right. and our zoning codes, uh, because it's incumbent on our, us as, as the elected officials to really go after the illegal housing and the scourge of illegal housing, and, and those people that would, would want to come into a neighborhood or come into a community and, and and do the types of things that they shouldn't be doing, you know, illegally converting houses, right. and, and we've we've been fortunate to avert some near, some near tragedies, but uh, we have to be ever vigilant on it. So you've done some great stuff with that, and, and I'm very proud of the work we've done with the creation of our office code compliance, uh, the muscular approach that we're taking with now issuing warrants through justice the justice court. But we've been following your lead, working very closely with the health department. Maybe right. you could talk a little bit about some of the, some of that initiative that you've been doing. Yeah, essentially, you know, when I first ran, I talked about the about the uh, slumlords, 
uh, and I'm not talking about somebody renting a room out or, you know, grandma and grandpa situation. I'm talking about people who are abusing other people, the, and typically the poorest among us. Uh, it is more prevalent in one particular town, Ramapo, than it is in others. Certainly Clarkston does not have a major issue like this. Um, but we, we, I was told, you can't get involved in that. Well, they underestimate the, the, my staff at times. Tom Humbeck, our county attorney, very skilled man, uh, found ways using the sanitary code to address this. And the problem has always been when you find, when you find slumlords, it's a cost of doing business. A $250 fine for someone who's making you know, $12,000 a year, or a month rather, is not gonna worry about paying a, a $250 fine. The fines in a health department uh, are $2,000 per violation per day. We have fined so many slumlords $42,000 at a shot. Uh, we've gotten their attention. Um, if the town wants to work with us, we look to do that as we do at Clarkstown. If you don't want to work with us, that's fine, we're going to do it anyway. And we're not displacing people, we're making slumlords become landlords. And it's all that's been taken was just somebody to say, no, you're not going to do it. And if you do it, you're going to pay dearly for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's working very well with the, it's called the Rockland Codes Initiative on our Rockland County uh, website, rocklandgov.com. It's on the main page on the lower left-hand side. There's a an, an, um, confidential complaint form you can fill out. And what drives me is two things. I am not going to wait to see a family get killed, and I'm not going to wait to see a firefighter who's there to save, to protect us, die unnecessarily because a slumlord wants to make money. That is what drives me as a former first responder. We had this happen in the Bronx. Jeff Cool has been very strong in advocating for us. He went out a window uh, because he was trapped, mm -hmm. and sadly, John Ballou, a pro of a resident with him, did not make it. Uh, this is what drives me as a former cop, uh, mm -hmm. that we protect our people, protect our first responders. It's the very least we can do for those who put their lives in line for us, and it's working. And, I, and, and again, thankfully, I have towns such as Clarkstown, where when we go there, if we don't see a health code violation, we can call your people for a building code violation right. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, a, it's a great one-two punch for the betterment of this community. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and I can tell you in my administration, uh, we're coming to the end of the, end of the year, and um, at, at, by the end of September, we had actually brought more, uh, more of these uh, violations into justice court uh, than we had done in any prior year. Right. And, um, and again, we, it took us a couple of months to get staffed up in this area. So uh, we have a much more muscular approach at Clarkstown. We're the only town that's actually issuing uh, warrants for our justice court. It was an education we had to kind of give our judges. They, they were like, you know, why are you doing this? Yeah. But uh, thankfully, we're, we put some teeth into it. And, and us working with, with the, uh, your folks over in the county, uh, it's really, it's kind of helped us. Because we do have areas in Clarkstown where there are illegal housing mm -hmm. and, and complaints. And, and there are people that are on speculation or buying property looking to try and come into the town. And uh, we just had, again, you know, a situation last week. We had a, a, a gentleman uh, right on the town border uh, bought a, a bi-level house. And, um, you know, the first thing he did was he tried to cut the garage up, not into one, but into two different apartments right. and turn it into a three-family house. We jumped all over them. The health department got involved as well, and, and that's a situation that stopped. We're protecting people's property values and their quality of life. Yeah. Um, we're, we're almost out of time, but I do want to just touch on, a, I think it's really important, the, the SANE building. Right. And I can speak clearly as the supervisor of the town of Clarkstown that uh, that's an important project for the town, from the town's perspective. You know, it's, um, it's an underutilized building that's off the tax roll. Um, it's, it really has a lot of issues. Um, you, you guys own it, and your proposal is to sell it. And um, you know, what's the status of this, the same building now? And, and you know, when can we expect to see that come on the tax rolls with, right. with a new opportunity for senior housing? Well, that, that is, as most who have been following this has been mired in politics. Uh, it's, it's frustrating for me to see this because this is in my community here. I've never seen a delegation from another town intercede as much as they have as they've done here. And, they're, and frankly, they're interfering with Clarkson at this point. We have a buyer who has proposed $4.51 million, which is $510,000 more than the appraised value, for senior housing, which will be defined specifically by the town, obviously, as is the law, um, beautification of the area. Uh, we have an eyesore there right now. Take the building down. Mm -hmm. it, it would be a perfect complement and component to this, the Hamlet Center, walkability, mm -hmm. uh, beautification. And we have this, this, this political football going on in the legislature, but I, I have hope uh, because it, it took 12 votes before to do this. As a local law has been introduced uh, by the Republican minority uh, it, to uh, move this forward and have a nine-vote scenario. 
Uh, my concern is that the buyer who wants to come in um, will not hang around forever. We had one bidder in two processes. Uh, so uh, there's not a lot of options here. Uh, I think it's critical that people who are hearing this call the legislature, make it clear to them that this is the town of Clarkstown. We, we expect that the entire legislature will work with you, work with the Clarkstown delegation, as the Clarkstown delegation and the town supervisor has always done with other towns. Mm -hmm. I have never seen it before. As you know, I spent eight years as a part-time legislator. I've never seen this. This should be happening immediately. Mm -hmm. And I think people need to call and say, this is our town. If you do not do this, and we have no other bidders, we're going to be stuck with an eyesore there. Or worse, we'll get a fire sale scenario. Right. So we can't have that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what people need to do who are listening to us. Make it very clear to legislature that we want this done. You have a willing buyer who's going to do the right thing. He's vetted. Um, there is no downside to this other than moving forward and, again, putting the property back in the tax rolls again. Yeah, no, absolutely. It'll, 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 be, it'll be a great boost to our tax rolls here. Yes. And taking a property, you know, that's been off the tax rolls for very many years mm -hmm. and an eyesore and, and putting it putting it back in the rolls. Well, that's that's all the time I, that, that we really have. I mean, we could have gone for, for a lot longer, a lot more issues to discuss. We'll have you back again in the future. But, uh, Ed, I want to thank you personally for your friendship and uh, certainly for uh, working together. You know, you're doing great things here right. in, in Rockland. And uh, as a Clarkstown resident, we're very proud that one of our, one of our own has is, is really uh, made a tremendous impact here as a county executive. Well, so thank you. I for appreciate that, George. As a friend and, and also a partner in government, we're going to get a lot of great things done for the people of Clarkstown and the people of this county together. Uh, and also I want to wish you and everybody out there the very best of the holiday season. Merry Christmas. Uh, happy Hanukkah. Uh, to all those who are celebrating, and um, the best of a happy and healthy new year. Great. Thank you, Ed. Okay. Thanks so Thank much. George.